The American Highway System. It connects cities and hideaways across our country. Not all of the roads are paved either. While it's not unique to the U.S., ours is a vast network that provides much more than a way to commute and conduct commerce. The spirit of America is one of exploration, innovation, and enjoyment. Automobiles embody all of those attributes. Cars Built and Rebuilt takes you on a journey of various cars, trucks, vans, and other modes of transportation as they relate to our history and to our culture. For more than a hundred years, the automobile has been in production around the world. The humble beginnings of the horseless carriage have not been forgotten, but instead have moved far beyond the dreams of those who gave birth not just to a new product, but a worldwide phenomenon. Over time, designs have become more sophisticated and diverse. The roles automobiles have played across the globe has made the entire planet more accessible to all. This is what we live for, and this is the genesis of all things this show. The awesome thing about Pantera hey, is that it's actually an Italian car with an American engine. In this episode, we're going to take a look at building a tribute building to the Japanese police interceptor built on a Datsun 240Z. Now, immediately you're asking yourself all kinds of questions like, who's Datsun? Who are they? How did they get their start? What inspired and required the use of the 240Z? How did they help the police force? Does law enforcement often use sports cars? I'm about to answer all those questions. My man. Anthony. What's up, baby? Ready to have some oh, fun? Uh, I am. Always. Good to see you too. JJ Morrison, Master yes, sir. Mechanic. It's always a pleasure to see Anthony you. Anthony Preston, the legend. <laughs> the one, the only. So check it out guys, today we have the privilege of not one, but two. 1971 240Z. Now this one here is a fair lady, and this guy here is a tribute police interceptor. I am so stoked, bro, to learn even more about these cars. Can I bring the owners in? Absolutely. Let's meet him. Dennis? Alex. Alex. Hey dude. Good. How are you, nice sir? Day. Pretty good. Thank good you. to see you. Alex? Good to see you. Dennis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good to see you there. Right. Well, why don't we start with the fair lady? Uh, Dennis, where did you uh, where did you acquire this beautiful piece of automotive ingenuity? Yeah. Well, it was a, my neighbor owned it across the street here in San Diego. And um, I liked the car, so I came over there and talked a little bit and took me for a ride in it. It was really a, a unique car. And he came over and asked me if I wanted to buy the car. And I said, sure. And it was $1,500. Do you, do you want to sell it for $1,500? <laughs> no. no. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. So how long have you owned it? About 30 years. Okay. Uh, early 70s, 71 is when I titled it. Wow. And uh, it's, it's been fun. I heard an urban legend or a myth, or I don't even know. Um, did they use these cars for um, law enforcement over in Japan? Oh, yeah, they did. Uh, it, it was a two-liter model, 2.0 liters. And uh, this is, was one of them. This is not a police car, but this is the type that they used. So this isn't just like a happy accident design. It's not just a clever idea. You actually want this to look like a cop car. Yes, sir. Well, tell me about that. This one's based off of his in Yamagata, which is a tribute to my grandmother. She was born in Yamagata, so that's kind of where that livery comes from. Um, I've also added my own little spin to it. It's not exactly to a T, obviously. I don't think the police ran flares this big and hair dams and all that stuff. Criminals beware, we have wide flares. So back to this police concept, I, I read, I think, at one time that, so could you, as long as you had a certain paint scheme and uh, and, and these these uh, this kanji, right? That's what the, these symbols are, right? Yes, that's correct. correct. As long as you had that, you could pretty much dress up just about anything on wheels as a police car, right? right? Yeah, they actually, and today they have uh, some hyper cars in the 90s, they used NSXs, uh, Skylines in the early, late 90s. Um, and obviously the standard patrol cars use like Toyota Crown and things like that. So do you have actual like police lights? Yes, I do. How was it though, like feeling, you know, you've, you've got your car set up and then to be here with this one, uh, how, how was that? It's an honor, honestly. I've actually never really spent much time, if at all, around a legitimate right-hand drive S30. So uh, it's, it's very humbling and I'll be honest, I'm a bit envious of you there, Dennis. But, uh... <laughs> so Dennis, yes. with, with your car, I mean, you've had it for 30 years. Is there any changes you're going to make to it? Are you going to keep it exactly the same? Or are you going to freshen this one up? Or well, what's your plan for this car no. now? Well, it 
And when I first got it, I went through it pr pretty well. And uh, it's, it's running great right now, and I don't think I'm going to do anything. I like, like it just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay, well, wait a minute. So we know what he has in, in his. All right, now I'm looking at your license plate, Dennis, and I see 2LZ. So I assume that's... Uh, corresponds with your engine size, but what about, what about you? What you got going on, on it here? Uh, I've got a, actually 2.8 liter out of a 1983 280ZX turbo. How do you like that? It's plenty good. It can be a little better, but it's definitely hauls the mail right now as it is. All right, so we know where Dennis got his fair lady. So what about you? Where did, how did you, did you buy yours from your neighbor for $1,400? Um, actually, I bought it 10 years ago for $2,000. What is the deal? I don't know, I never find <laughs> Those these. days are locked We're gonna start hanging out with these they guys. They don't exist for me, right? Exactly. Wow. I've had it for about 10 years. It's been my wedding. It's brought my wife and I together so much so that she actually has her own uh, 280Z from 1976. So this setup in your driveway is very common. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have this as well, but you know, I, I know it's off limits. Dennis, what's your favorite memory in this inside this car of yours? Um, we can't talk about well, that on TV. The, oh, well, we, can, we can edit it. Right? I'm just kidding. Can we cut it out? <laughs> this is on TV and my kids are going to hear it, so it's going to be clean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, th it, it, it kind of has a not a, a mystic point about these cars, but people come in and they see the right hand drive and they get kind of an interest in it, you know, and they like to talk and to see it. And, and, um, uh, and it doesn't matter the age. Um, when, I, when my daughters were younger, they would come to me and say, Dad, my oldest daughter is Kirst, she said, uh, Dad, can uh, my friends look at your car in the garage? I said, sure, honey. So they go in there and they would open the thing and I'd show them the engine and that. And then a few years later it was, uh, Kirsten would say, Dad, can you put your car out in the driveway so my friends can see your car? And I said, sure, sure, you could do that. And then I would talk to them about the car and they would have a lot of fun. And uh, then in her senior year, I let her have the car to drive to her senior year. Not she says, thing. Dad, the boys love this car. Okay, yeah. You know, and you're like, this is exactly what I wanted. And <laughs> long, long blonde hair and you know, she's driving down the road. Uh, and uh, now today, the actual owner of this is her son. Uh, okay. Kyle, man, it's just it's just been in the family, and it's, it's there. Hopefully, it'll always stay in the family. Well, that's that. cool. That's I like that be. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, yours is going to stay in the family. Oh yeah. You and the wife, mean, you and yeah. wife got kids. Uh, actually, we're, our first is upcoming next year. So several years from now, it's going to be passed on as a family heirloom to him. Possibly. You, you're like absolutely not. This kid is uh, never yeah. touching. Possibly. It. Depends on how they end up doing in school. But. <laughs> Nice. Bro, we've done some serious cars on the show, but I gotta admit, these have got to be among my top favorites. These are incredible. I 100% agree. Having the two of them together is pretty amazing because this isn't something you get to see every day. It's interesting to see, you know, what the car looks like original uh, versus Alex's build to do a police interceptor. Uh, pretty amazing. I say we get the guys in here, they can open up the hoods and uh, tell us what they got. much uh, the way it came from the factory. Okay. Um, we have the SU carburetors from, as from, from the factory. The distributor points. The radiator looks new and shiny. Yeah, we had problems with heat uh, on the car when I was at 29 Palms with the Marines. And so we wound up putting in a higher capacity radiator, which brought the uh, heat down and worked really very well. They, they did a good job in engineering the engine. And I guess so when they're going to be part of the police department. <laughs> so, <laughs> So you got to catch the bad guy some way. So as long as the bad guy had 251 horsepower, yeah. you can't wait. Well, then you go to handle it, <laughs> and you get him in a turn. Now, right. Okay, so to that point, have you done anything to the suspension or anything? No, the suspension is stock, other than the shock absorbers have been changed, and the springs were changed at one time. Had the normal compression on the springs, though. Any other challenges or any other interesting stories about just working on the drivetrain? There was a problem with the transmission, and um, we took it down to the shop, and they took the transmission off and um, replaced it with a five-speed transmission. And I was really upset with that because that transmission had three components that were cast and uh, was only on two Lady Z's. Wow. And I get the car back and I find it's got a five speed in it and the transmission doesn't look like it. So that was a disappointment. You know, you, you really have to watch where you get these repairs. Did I ask you what kind of horsepower this thing's pushing? <laughs> well, uh, it's about 120. What? That's it? It's about 120. When you fire this but, thing up and cruise down the road, it sounds like 
three times that, 120 well, horsepower? Yeah, it's about 120. Well, see, that's a, it's a chrome valve cover we put on. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's, it makes it better. <laughs> that all comes it from looks that. faster. <laughs> this is pretty fast, but this wow. looks faster. Well, now that we know what's going on with the original Fair Lady, what do you say we took a look at what's going on with Alex's car? This is slightly bigger motor, looks like, right? Just, Just a little bit. Yes, uh, actual physical size, not so much. I think it seems like, it actually seems like, well, maybe just all the extra components you have on here. This is a, so it's turbo water, this is a turbo motor you have in here, right? Yes, sir, uh, this is drivetrain came out of a 1983 280ZX turbo. It's the final iteration of the L-Series for the US market. So this technically has all the R&D done. This is, again, the final product of years of being in the U.S. market. So right. this should have all the best of the best, I guess you would say. <laughs> is that what that hole in the hood is for because it's a turbo car? Yes, um, that is actually a factory duct from a 280ZX turbo. And so it's functional? Turbo. Yes, it actually flows NACA duct style onto the turbo and helps cool the system. Um, luckily, this engine is efficient enough to make 300 horsepower with the setup, right. which is about 100 over stock with relatively minor bolt ends. Well, see the big difference between uh, factory and but I guess this would be a proper police in this effort, wouldn't it? We can actually get a hold of somebody if we needed to. I don't know. I think Dennis could take him, especially because his wheel is on the other side. Well, <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe these engines are the same size. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. This, I could go to sleep here. Right? <laughs> I can't go to here. I also find it really interesting that, you know, with all these different cars, parts being interchangeable and you can take them from the 240 to the 280. It's like an adult Lego set. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's it's pretty uh, sweet actually to, to be able to do a custom build, something that you want to make truly your own. Now I personally, I'm a, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to the automotive affinity myself, so I love what Dennis is doing. Man, I'm torn because this is so, what's so great about this episode, is we get a serious contrast between both these vehicles. My ultimate goal with this car, obviously, other than being a tribute, is going to be a good all-rounder something I can take to the drag strip, have gotcha. fun running through passes, mm -hmm. go on a cruise with my wife down in Malibu or whatever it may be. You know, just, just a good all around comfortable car. I want to do a total episode when this is completely finished of where he just drives it down the street with the sirens on and just see how many people we can pull over with it. <laughs> I like that. Now that we know what's going on with the original Fair Lady, what do you say we took a look? Oh my God. <laughs> this is what happens. The suspension is lowered and it's stiffer than it was before. So you can offset where the wheels stick on to the hub uh, further without having to change anything. You lost me, it's stiff. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we know what the original Fair Lady has, what do you say we took a look? Okay, I'll try that again. Well, now that we know what the original Fair Lady has. <laughs> really, on this one, on that one line? Sorry. That's, that's where we're gonna break? Wow. All the suspension is doing right now, it lowers the car and it makes it stiffer, so. <laughs> you wanted to say that. You, I did, I did, because it's fucking actually important. <laughs> but you ruined stiff for me. I ruined stiff for him, that's what I do. I'll take things that are stiff and I ruin them. Let me know when you're done. You want to just wait, you want to say it? I'm good.